Hey, good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us. We're 20 sides to every story. We are playing our fourth, and I believe will be our final session, exploring the module Winter's Daughter. Uh, I'm Alex. I'll be GMing the session, and today I am joined by Winston playing Silver the Elf, Isaac playing Friar Fitzpatrick, Ryan playing Sir Joffrey the Knight, and Chris playing Thomas the Minstrel. We are missing Maureen, who plays Lilibeth the Hunter. Um, and so we're just going to treat that just like we did with characters previously. We're just going to have Lilibeth sort of fade into the background. We have two characters that have a, a gone up a level. Friar Fitzpatrick, you are among those, right? You're level two now. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what happened with uh, char Whoa. character advancement for you? Well, Friar Fitzpatrick, I think that just he has really put his he's really practiced his faith in a practical sense. And I think that's maybe strengthened his bond with his one true God. He's doing some good work. So he got to he, he prayed the one true God and he listened and he got he rolled on a D a D four and got a four. So his hit points are looking like nine now, which is pretty much a god in old school essentials, as well as uh, he has an additional spell. And I've already told the party that you can expect an additional healing, uh, a healing spell. So now we could now we could choose to stay in the dungeon a little bit longer now, a little bit extra cash coming our way. Yeah, you say you're a god, but you touched the wrong gem. You're still I, dead. No, I, I'm just kidding. I'm still staying in the back. <laughs> awesome. I would say Winston is the happiest about having a second heal spell. Yes. Yeah. And uh, Thomas also is level two. So, uh, Chris, what, what happened with Thomas uh, for level advancement? Well, his uh, his pickpocket skill increased a little bit more. Also, uh, his various times reading languages, his reading languages went up as well. I, too, maxed my hit points out. So his hit points are looking at 13 which means that he is even more godlike, according to Isaac. But one other thing, uh, I think one of the more important things, along with hit points, being a second-level minstrel, he's able to uh, he's got a skill called Lore, which uh, it allows him a chance to do monster identification, seeing things that they haven't seen before, and kind of know some strengths and weaknesses, and also being able to get an insight on magic items that we find. So Awesome. So our uh, session today is going to pick up on the 16th of Chysting. It is another hot and humid summer day here in the Dolmenwood. You're waking up just outside the cottage of the Droon wife and daughter, Madrid and her daughter, Polith. You have been making camp within the wood, a comfortable distance away, it would seem, from... The Druin Cottage. Madrid has been less than enthusiastic about having you here, but uh, has tolerated your presence as you were. Your story of having a relationship with Aethelgrim, her husband, seemed to check out, and you were doing something that was in service or of benefit to her daughter, so she has tolerated you here. You're waking up once again, that little clay creature, kind of like a mini golem, is uh, stumbling over to you with another plate of food here this morning. It's almost squirrel-like in appearance. It's got kind of acorn eyes, you know, baked into the, the clay work of the little creature. And it's just on little stubby legs, carrying a tray of some nuts, berries, maybe some fresh cream, and uh, some hard-boiled eggs out for you to eat this morning. Where you have a journey ahead of you, uh, probably tre trekking yourselves back to the Barrow Mounds in hopes of bringing the ring back to Sir Chide so that you can aid in his transit from the material plane. And if he, what he says could be believed that there is a way for you to cross over into the land of fairy right there in the tomb and so i believe that is the agenda but i will turn it over to you for some maybe morning talk or planning and kind of hear what the the party is up to this morning i did have a question it's kind of technical it just jumped out at me and i was looking at my character sheet are there any like runes or inscriptions on alpine alpine Yes, uh, that is how you know what its name is. Um, okay. You were able to read that because it is in um, uh, Sylvan. Okay. Yeah, I have a, um, 
elves can read magical runes, which I've completely forgotten about until I just read it. So, but if it's a, a language I know, that's irrelevant. And so, they're, they're essentially, Alfame literally is seven magical runes that make up those those letters. The only challenge with this is you don't you don't have a clear understanding of exactly what those runes and combination mean as far as the powers of the sword. Um, right. You you have a sense that it is enchanted and that there is something about the name Alfheim that has something to do with undead. And so you're predisposed to believing it's probably like an undead bane, but you, you don't know that for sure because you haven't wielded it against a undead yet to confirm that. That or it turns me undead, one or the other. Is this something that I could use my new skill on? I know you were thinking about using it on, what was it, a book, maybe, that you had? That's right, yes, that uh, Grimoire thing or whatever that we found in the tomb that we just came from. The Grimoire was the book that, I think you found it in the maybe the bed of the Barrow Bogey. It was like a black leather, vellum mm. paged, uh, it looked like the script in it was written in blood. Written in blood, correct. Um, yeah, so if you want to attempt your skill on either of these, you could, or both. Um, I will do, I will do the sword first. I'll say, uh, Silver, if I could take a look at that, perhaps I can decipher a little more information on this. Of course, and I'll just hold it up to him. And I will, you know, kind of run my fingers across it and try and read what's on it and garner what information I can. And I rolled a four, so that's no good. No good on that one. Did you want to try the book right away? Uh, sure. Yeah, I'll say I this uh, at this point I do not I do not have any information for you, Silver. I cannot glean any any more from the runes. I too am confused by the the order of the runes and such. Well, I, I appreciate the effort. Um, it was to find out the old fashioned way. Yes. Yes. As you're having this conversation, Thomas and Silver, Thomas, from your perception. There's something weird about Silver. Uh, Silver is usually very eloquent, pronounces their words very crisp, and uses a robust vocabulary. Um, none of that is happening as they're talking to you. Like, your impression is that Silver is stone-cold drunk as they are slurring their words. They seem to be having some difficulty standing. And what? The sort of drunkenness, that's what I'm going to call this. <laughs> and silver there's like your perception is like that everything's fine like, mm -hmm. like you don't feel any of this yeah it's like that episode of the simpsons where homer gets really drunk and he thinks he's super eloquent and he's just like throwing up in the bushes <laughs> yeah yeah i remember that okay i got it inspiration if you're not fully awoken yet this morning silver you <clears> seem <throat> off Oh, um, and I'll like glamour my face a little bit to make it a little more beautiful and be like, or try to, I guess. <laughs> like, oh no, I, I just a little bit of maybe bedheading. The glamour just... transforms. It's just like sweaty, slicked back hair, just kind of beet red, like bloated face. <laughs> Perhaps uh, a uh, a glance in uh, the mirror. You're you're out of sorts this morning. My friend. Uh, and I know I'm thinking that something's wrong with Thomas. Uh, <laughs> Thomas, friend, and, and just clasp him on the shoulder. I think you might be out, out of sorts. Something's, something's wrong with you. I'm not drunk. You're drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I did not say you were drunk, sir. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, and I'll wander over and try to find some kind of reflective surface. Just to humor him. I yeah, know if there would be there, yeah. There was a little meandering stream that ran through the the glade in front of the cottage, and you go over there and you take a look into the the surface of the water, and um, yeah, you look like shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez, my, oh, this is not good. I smack my face a bit, a little bit of water. I think I'm cursed. I will pull out that book. Sure, and maybe. Uh take a bit of a hanky so as not to really touch it, sure. I guess, as I flip through it, see if I can make heads or tails of the writing. Uh, that is a two, so that is a success. So um, you're flipping through the book and you're studying it. What you can discern from it is that this book, uh, the Barrow Bogey is not its original owner, that this book once belonged 
To an owner that goes by many names, you find reason to believe that the names of this entity are Black Alice, Shub Nana, Mother Swithenby, and throughout the margins, you find occasional references to a fairy realm by, that goes by the name of Absinthe. Is the, is the writing a language that I... What is the language that it's written in? You don't know. Read languages. Oh my gosh, that's an odd one. So that's good. Yes. So this is a exclusive language that is used by the witches in Dolmenwood. So a lot of the a lot of the rituals and things that are written in the book are prayers to deities. You get the sense that they're all like wood gods or things that originate. Gods that maybe walked the earth at one point in time and lived in the Dolmen Wood. Very old magic, very dark magic. I am going to close the book very lightly, wrap it in something, well, probably holding my breath while I do it, <laughs> uh, and I guess maybe fall very silent for the moment coming to that realization i would say joffrey just the type not to read the room very well will probably like stroll over to thomas being like oh you know we've got some other weapons if you want to die see you seem to have the skill of figuring out what things are we've got some more things we found if you want to take a look and kind of pat him on the back maybe a little bit too hard while his breath is taken from him. I will, I will kind of look up and with a with an oddly very serious look on my face, I say this, and I point to the book. I say, I feel that this could be quite dangerous. And then Joffrey's kind of gonna be uh you know taken aback for a second and be like, This 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 book that we found that barrel bogey had. It deals with witches and dark magic. Anything in there about curses? Try my best to like simplify my language. No. However, have you heard of a realm called Absinthe? Is this like a pocket realm? Or is it like um I guess an understanding about fairy? Is fairy like this almost like a conjoined series of realms, like a continent? Or is it almost like dim my planes? Mm, that's probably a good question. I would say probably more like demi planes. Okay. They probably have their own doors in between them. Okay. How obscure is absence? You have not a strong command over what it is. Um, you maybe have heard that it is the dominion of the Queen of Blackbirds. Hmm. Um, but what That's... her disposition is or like how she treats people, like those kinds of things, you're, you're not exactly sure. That's pretty much all I really know. I don't feel good. What, what of the name... Black Alice. It seems that either this book was previously owned by a single person, I would guess a witch, by three names, and I was able to write down Black Alice, Mother, uh, Swith Mother Switherby, yeah. and then I, I, didn't, I didn't write down the other one. But I do not know if those three names refer to the same person or three it separate individuals that has owned this, but... Uh, Isn't, um... Wasn't there a talk of a hag? I want to say north. I think we might be south at this point of where we were. But. Yeah, north, north, closer to where the woodcutters were very concerned about the hag. Mm. And at that point, you were more north, and they said that she dwelled in the forest to the west of them. Her daughter was it's... looking to connect with some witches as well. And there was some type of ritual going on down there. I wonder either if this pothead was, had stole this book? Or was lent it. I mean, he's stolen everything else. I, I would assume that it was stolen. That means someone is looking for it. I mean, it's possible it could have had some protections from location in that tomb. And now that it has been brought out of there, it is possible that we are possibly being watched. Or whoever this Black Alice is, perhaps has, knows that the... That the book is, has exited or, re, you know, returned from wherever it, it was. Maybe we save questions for the drone about this. I think that may very well be wise. Also, Chide, we, we hmm. are on our way back to return 
to bring the ring to him, it is possible that perhaps he knows of these names. Mm. If, if they are perhaps ancient names or not. I do not fancy the idea of tangling with a with a hag. So yes, it uh, it did strike fear in me somewhat. Yes. Now was the drones the drone's daughter was trying to seek out some witches or something like that? Yeah. She said she wanted to like the witch get the witches to teach her magic, but they wouldn't take her. This is a out there idea, but perhaps we could gain some alliances by helping the drone's daughter contact the witches and then returning the witch's book. Mm. <laughs> well, if they're just kind of like witchy witches, little cool, little nice witches. That's one thing. But if this is like, so mm -hmm. the one thing I would say about the characterization of what the druid's daughter wants is, you would probably get the sense like she is longing for another life that she doesn't understand, and she's heard about witches, uh -huh. and she the, all she knows is that this is this is some kind of sorority, and, and the only way that you get in is by knowing another witch. And I don't know any witches. I've never I've never walked more than six miles from my house. So that's that's what she's longing for and wanting, and you know having talked with Madrid quite a bit, you get the sense that the Droon have no interest in allowing her to, like, ever leave home. Probably especially to join the witches. Probably Which... especially for that <laughs> purpose, yes. <laughs> right. now, is there any history between witches and Droon that we're aware of, or is there... Is it good question. two totally separate... Like, we've established Droons are kind of a, a, a race, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I don't think that you've talked about or have discovered. I feel like the concept of witches maybe is really new to you guys. You know, I love you, I guess. What I'm worried about going further is what is just what happens when I will say it. I'll, I don't mean to say it in front of everyone, but I will. What happens when this elf maiden ends up being the love of Sir Chide? What will you do? You will not fight him. For her hand, will you? No. You, everybody knows she loves me. There's no <laughs> issue here. Why are you worried about such things? She came to me in my dream. Did she come to him in his dream? No. My stress levels are increasing. Alex, a uh, quick question for clarity for future decision making. Do I feel drunk or just am I coming you do, across you, drunk? You do not feel drunk, but everyone is Good. reacting to you as if, yeah. Good. So I'm not gonna make some bad choices, basically. So that's no, good. like, like in terms of like, if you have to dodge like a fireball or something, and you took a die, like, like your dexterity save or whatever, your reflex save would be normal, but it might appear to everybody else that you just like you just happened like... to fall over and like the thing missed you, <laughs> right? Cool. Yeah. Main thing I just was more worried about was should I be acting as a drunk person in terms of like decision making? No, I, that's I, important. It's good. Yeah. It just would be like, yeah, probably social interactions are what would be impacted. Got it. No worries. Interesting. Hopefully the sword is also like, gives you some whoop ass. Right. And it doesn't just make your breath smell really bad. I'm like hobbling and now I come across drunk, you know. <laughs> The classic elf, Tolkien style. Well, I think I would say first and foremost, keep that we have this completely under wraps. You all have probably two things I guess you could do. I mean, you do have the ring that Sir Chide had asked you to retrieve. So you have that that you could bring back to the tomb. Or uh, there has been t some talk about talking to the Droon. I don't know if you meant for that to be uh, just now or something to do uh, after your business with Sir Chide. What are you thinking you might want to do this morning? So my take on it, if we go to the Droon and we like interact with the Dolan Stones more, like something could happen that could derail us in a good way. I mean, not a good way, but like it could be like a whole quest, you know, and potential. Um, and so it would I'm, interfere and, with our current tw current quest. Right. And so my thoughts are kind of, I mean, maybe not, but my thoughts are, as much as I do want to talk to the Druun, I mean, we could talk to the Druun and just not interact with the Dolman Stones yet. You know, kind of close that down. And then, but I don't want to like, I just want to make sure that we, before we embark on anything impactful, that we get that ring deposited. That would be my suggestion as well. Let's let, <gasps> let us get Sir Chide and his bride taken care of. And if it leads to heartbreak, Sir Joffrey, uh, we can always visit 
Madam Shantywood, my treat. What? <laughs> what uh, we can find you a new girlfriend, is what he's saying. What should they do at Madam Shantywood? Ballroom with some dancing, some nice dancing. They do dancing there. Madam Shantywood's a dancer, right? Oh, brother. I think she can maybe. dance. No. <laughs> That conversation is maybe happening as you are <laughs> rifling your way through the woods. Another, I think I've always said it's like about three hours maybe away from the cottage to get back to the burial grounds. And um, you return back to the barrow that you have been to before with those dolmen stones etched in runes positioned just outside the entrance to the tomb. Descending down the stairs... Presumably. No, nobody's eager to, like, go uh, burrowing through the wormhole, right? Yeah, go through the yeah. tube entrance. Mm -hmm. uh, you... this one, right? I'm oh, sorry. And uh, you come into this uh, this opening hall with where the mosaic of Sir Chai atop his white charger, piercing his blade into the heart of the Cold Prince, uh, is... Uh, laid out on the floor before you. Not sure that it matters much how you get there, but one way or another, you circumvent the halls of the tomb, return back to where those two hounds, those statuesque hounds on the chain are, speaking aloud their names and entering back to the tomb of Sir Chide. But you enter in, you see the stone coffer is, is there, um, and Sir Chide's spirit pale, semi-transparent, azure, drawn with age, the armored ghost turns around and looks at you all and says, My friends, you have returned back, I hope with good news. Let's yeah, I'm going to wave his arm around in the air. Ring. He shudders and he says, Well, then you have this here, I can safely attune back to that object and you will deliver me, yes? You will deliver me to my beloved who waits in the tower on the other side of the crossing. Yes, is that, is that uh, what we're doing? So how do we do that? <laughs> <laughs> right? yes. Would we be able to speak with you in this ring? Or should we ask you the questions now? Uh, I, I will not be able to commune with anyone but my betrothed once I am in the ring. It is... An object that binds our souls together. But without without uh, form such as it is, I, I won't be able to, to speak with you. So yes, if you do have questions or things that we must discuss, let us have at it now. Have you ever heard the name Black Alice? Oh, I'm afraid I do not know that name. What about Mama Shabadoo? <laughs> Is your friend all right? <laughs> He's having a rough day. I don't know. I will disregard that question. Mother Swith <laughs> Mother... What was it? Switherby? Is that name? These are odd names that you bring before me. Um... Well, witches? Do you know anything about witches? Witches. I have heard that there are those that lurk in the deep of the wood, performing rituals that are sacrilegious, performing sacrifices to heathen gods, but I don't know of any myself. So, Alfam, have you seen this sword before? I have not. I don't know that I've encountered that exact blade, but I've seen blades like it held in the Hands of my opponents on the battlefield in the wars that we have waged against the Cold Prince. It would seem it is of fairy origin. Did the uh, Cold Prince elves uh, happen to seem inebriated when you fought them? No. His, his fighting force was among the best. Very skilled swordsmen. They were not known for, uh, for, for being incapacitated in battle. I'm cursed. <laughs> I'll just take the sword back. You state that you're going to enter the ring and we need to then deliver the ring and you to your betrothed. Yes. In the, the depths of this crypt, 
There is a chamber that has been warded. You see, the binding of our souls, one of mortal and one of fairy, has created something of a, a paradox, a gateway into the realm of Phrygia. This should not be possible after I... You can tell he's like kind of hesitating a little bit to get into this history. But he, he says, the Cold Prince was not slain by my blade, as the songs and the tales may proclaim, but he was lured to a specific site so that they call it a ritual, call it a collusion of magics could be performed in order to banish him back to Phrygia, where no roads were ever to allow him back into the Dolmenwood. The magic that binds myself and Princess Snowfall at dusk has created such a road outside of what should be possible. Fortunately, um, it would seem that he perhaps does not know about this pathway, or he would have taken advantage of it long ago. But if we cross you through it to her, maybe is there a possibility of him finding out? I believe with us united, on the other side, it may close this loophole. And we will be trapped there then as well. I do not know. I mean, it would keep the cold prince from... If we were to get stuck, it would mean we did a very, very good thing. And if we don't get stuck, then we didn't do such a good thing. We helped Sir Chai do somewhat of a good thing. But we're, we're going to have to really hide this, this uh, portal from the cold prince. I don't like the sounds of getting stuck in Phrygia. Sir Chide, um, you could tell may maybe he was hesitant to bring this up because he suspected that if you knew that that was a possibility that you wouldn't do it. But being a noble knight as such as he is, he, he had to tell you he couldn't keep a lie from you. He couldn't, he, you know, just like Silas, <laughs> he can't, can't keep a secret like that. <laughs> So he decides to tell you a little bit more, maybe, about the gravity of what this means. And so he begins to tell you that many people died. Hundreds, maybe thousands of people died in Dolmenwood, on both sides of the conflict with the Cold Prince, in order to banish him. And that desperate choices were made in order to make it happen. And he tells you that, at the time... When the original kingdom of Brackenwold and the church originally arrived in the Dolmenwood and they came to odds with the Cold Prince, they realized they were on the losing side against a foe that had been there for thousands of years and had countless resources coming from Phrygia to back up his claim of the Dolmenwood. And so the kingdom of Brackenwold and the Church of the One True God entered into a pact with the Droon. Hey. And what they did was that they colluded to divert one of the one of the ley lines to create a ring that was grounded by dolmen stones. And when I say a ring, I'm not talking like a ring like what's out in front of the tomb. We're talking a ring that spans miles and has created a uh, force field, I guess. A ring of banishment to keep the Cold Prince in Phrygia from entering into the Dolmenwood. All of, all of the crossings that entered into Dolmenwood are all contained within that ring. And so it was a bit of magic of the divine, a bit of the dark magic of the Droon, and the legitimacy of the kingdom of Brackenwald that made this plan come together. And so the battle in which Sir, Sir Chide was killed on was riding out into the midst of that ring and taking the fight to the Cold Prince in the shadow of his uh, castle, Castle Horblight, uh, here in the Dolmenwood. So... Um, his life was basically sacrificed to ensure that the Cold Prince would be within the ring when the Dolmen Stones were activated. And so he tells you this in hopes that it will bring some gravity to 
that it's maybe dumb luck that the cold prince, you know, locked his daughter away, angry with her for having a tryst with a more mere mortal. That this there was this loophole, this this connection from the tomb into Phrygia. Um, but his he you know he's he's long abandoned his daughter and doesn't apparently look after her much. But should should it ever enter his consciousness that there's a way back into Dolmenud, there's no question that he would take it and bring warfare back. Okay, let me see if I'm understanding. You have the rings of Dolmen stones that are various places kind of throughout the Dolmen wood. But surrounding those even further out there are like singular stones that ring kind of the whole of Dolmenwood. Yes. And he would tell you that this ring has a name. It is called the Ring of Chell. It encircles the region of the Dolmenwood called the Dwelmferg, which would be like northwest of where you are currently. Would it be possible then, if we're trapped over there from this ferry road closing, uh, to maybe have assistance from the Droon to pull us back? Through the Dolmen Stones? He would say that the Triple Compact would probably, if it is still being upheld, the Druun are very unlikely to help you with that. Because their sacred duty is to not make exceptions to protecting that ring. Let's say there was a Druun in our debt. Would it be possible? I mean, we must think about this, though. Would we even temporarily want to open up that danger to this to this land. I'm just wondering if we could coordinate efforts, even if we could just get a one minute window. Sir Chide would say it would require you to find one of the Droon who guard one of the summer stones that make up the Ring of Chell and convince them to make an exception for you. Well, the other choice, I uh, guess it leaves us with two other choices is one, and this is all drunk as hell. We go in and don't come back. Or we leave this untended. I will go in first. If I cannot come back, if the window closes, then then at least you will all still be here, and I will be with my lady. Mm, I'll go too. No. Joffrey feels kind of like mixed, right? Like he feels like. This this thing should be closed. This like doorway should be closed, right? He feels like he he what even though he kind of is setting in that this elf maiden is in love with Sir Chide, like he just wants to see her. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. and then also like true love. Yeah, I don't know. It just seems like like that's the the knight would sacrifice himself to to save the world. You know, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Let's do it. And, and Alex, we are currently right now inside the Ring of Chell, right? No. We you, are not? You would not be. Yeah, it's like to the, you said it was the northwest? Yeah, quite far away from where you, where you currently are. Then these stones, and I would ask, uh, the stones around here, what, are they just empowering this bond, or are they something else? I believe... Now, of course, I, I don't know for sure. Their purpose is not known to me, but I imagine that part of what they've been repurposed to do is to seal off this this crossing that has been created because of my union with Princess Snowfall at Dusk. You had mentioned to me that there were red candles guarding the stairway that leads to the uh, lower levels of the crypt. It would seem that perhaps perhaps the, the Triple Compact is still alive and well today. Or at least it was at the time that this tomb was constructed. The red candles are a symbol of that. Um... They're a ward. A ward against Fey. So some things about the tomb might be making sense now. That there were some things that were a blend of both Fey and uh, Mortal. And 
there was some evidence that maybe somebody didn't like some of that stuff and took it out, whoever the priest was that lived here. When he talks about the triple compact, you probably have a pretty good sense that, at least publicly, like, Brackenwald and the church definitely aren't celebrating the fact that they made some secret deal with the Druin once upon a time. Mm -hmm. um, so probably the nature of that alliance is not the same today as it was then. It's not alive today. I guess that was, that was the question he kind of he hypothesized it. But it, it it's it. I'm happy. So it gives me joy that the church was sensible, and doing this though. At your at your time, the drone were pl plentiful, or at one time the drone were the most powerful force in the wood. They had enslaved the goat folk. They had um, mm. tremendous pull and influence. But their uh, ambitions, as happens with empires and forces that grow too, f too strong, their hubris was their undoing. They delved into secrets that diminished their ability to maintain control and order in the Dolmenwood. Joffrey would lean towards going through the portal. But he would also lean towards like telling everybody else, "Don't go through the portal with me." I think at this point, Sir Chide will say, "I have seen. I I can sense the good in you all, and I know that you will make the right choice, and I will leave it to you." And with that, his spirit will get absorbed into the ring, and the the emblem on it. We'll kind of have a just a soft glow. I will go. I will go, brother. I won't speak for you, Thomas, but um, I feel I feel drawn to the quest. I've lived my life uh, in a, a most recently in a quite a boring, sheltered way, and I've never explored the way that I always dreamed. To me, this is an adventure, an epic one. So. I'm in. And, and brother, I do, I do not want to bring you to your certain doom because of my morals and, and what I believe is right. Brother, we are stronger together. I would not have it. I would not have... I would not want to be in a world without you, brother. I, I'm going with you. The group is going to take the ring and descend down the stairs into that sub-level. So as you do, um, you would, at the base of the stone stairs... You would see that curtain of floating red candles in front of you. There's not so many candles that it like completely obscures your view of the chamber beyond. Um, on the other side of the curtain of candles, you would see a vaulted chamber. And in the middle of the room, there's like a, a shimmering pool that has been built into the floor. And at the center of that, almost like a fountain, there's a statue at the center of it with a elven maiden constructed of white marble. She has long flowing hair in a robe, and upon her brow, a star, uh, very similar in look to the statue that you saw up above. What would you like to do? Silver, did you not, had you not mentioned before that many of these highways between realms, many of them are not two-way? Many right. of them are one-way? Oh, the one I came in on was one-way, by nature. But sometimes they're two ways. I suppose we could test this one. Would Joffrey just step in? He probably would. Dumbass. All right. So you kind of like step through and pass the, the candles. And now you're standing in this vaulted chamber that slowly starts to kind of dissolve away. Like the walls just kind of flake away and kind of break down almost as if on the other side of those walls was this whole other world that was obscured from your view just by brick and mortar but it is a expanseless uh area of snow and wood suddenly you begin to shiver as you are seeing the vapor streaming from your breath and there is um a frozen lake in front of you and you can see pathways like boot prints or feet prints in the snow that seem to go back and forth from this tower that stands um, in the center of the lake. 
It's a solid, solid frozen lake. And then behind you, just like this poor clad forest of fir wood. Tower has a solid door at its base made of polished cherry wood black iron fittings sir joffrey you're standing there and taking it all in and then from the woods you just hear a ho 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 as a laden sleigh pulled by white stakes rushes from the forest and on top there's a goblin wearing a little red stocking cap and just like colorful like scarves and gloves and he's uh at the reins and he's just got his Sleigh is just bountiful with like um, little boxes. It looks like there's like maybe a cauldron that's kind of steaming a little bit with a like a black wrought iron like cap on it. And there's just lots of bottles like filled with bottles like wine bottles that have little bows and ribbons on them. And he's just like mush, mush as the sleigh starts to move like like past you little goblin gives you a salute and like the sleigh is just moving towards the tower i'm gonna try to hop a ride okay yeah you can do that and then like it's on the icy lake and so you're kind of like without skates just kind of sliding around as it's moving um so the rest of you see like impossibly like this the carriage or the sleigh like move through the chamber and then sir joffrey jump on the back and then he's gone and it like passes through the wall oh it's bad right what is what is joffrey oh and i think uh the Was fire not supposed to check to see if he could come back this way <laughs> <laughs> he <always> forgets <laughs> Oh, and he's gonna go. I think I think the fire is gonna just go forward. Yeah, I all think right. we're all in. I'm I'm gonna follow. All right, so you're all in. So the rest of you enter, and you see everything that I had just described to Sir Joffrey, the 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 frosty landscape and everything. But you're are all. We, are we having Lilibeth go in? Uh, let's just have Lilibeth stay on this side. Like that's sensible. Like I'll be the one that stays behind in case you guys can't get back. I'll talk to the druid kind of thing. Oh. Um, are you sure you don't want company? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not certain I want to do this, but I will follow. Okay, so you enter also. Those of you that enter in, uh, Sir Joffrey maybe didn't notice it just because of the chaotic uh, nature of the arrival, but there's another thing that you'll notice in that there is like a crack in the atmosphere or in just the suspended in the air is like this rift that glows kind of purple faintly and there's like slime that comes down and drips down coalesces on the floor kind of dies like the snow violet but um yeah so you all have entered into the realm now and you can see sir joffrey is cruising towards the tower and probably by the time you all like make the decision to enter and get acclimated the sleigh is already up to the base of the tower where the goblin is like getting out and looking over at joffrey and says hey you want to give me a hand with this stuff mac come on <laughs> and he's just like he's like loading up big armfuls of like gifts to like bring to the door i think joffrey would probably uh like, if I look back at where we came from, do I see my my friends, or is it too far? Or yeah, you see them. They've entered into the realm now. So yeah, I guess I will look back and I'll kind of see them. I'll be like, hey, and then I'll be like, yeah, thanks for the ride, and I'll yeah, I'll start helping them unload the uh, the uh, cart, the sleigh. All right, so you start to unload some things. Uh, what do the rest of you do while that's happening? I'm going to step back through to make sure we can get back to the other side. Yeah, so basically what it is is, like, there's, like, a curtain of candles that's, like, suspended in the air, and if you walk through it, like, you return back to the stairwell. Do we see the candles okay. from where we are? Yep, okay. and so they're a visual marker of where the crossing is. Got it. Okay, that's all. Um, all right. There's probably a second. There's like a second curtain of can red candles, like equid like based on like where they would be in relation to each other in the real world. They're about that same distance across from each other. Yeah, I think uh, the yeah. fire will walk a bit gingerly on the ice 
as he tries to make his way. You all are carefully navigating the frozen lake. Uh, the goblin is just kind of, um, as he's like loading up stuff in his arms and like he's bringing it over to the door. He's like, hey, these your friends over here. Oh, it's my brother. That's Silver. That's Thomas. I grab a couple boxes, you guys. Let's get going here. Do you so, deliver here often? Uh, not ever. Uh, but there's a big wedding that's yeah, going to happen. You know what? Actually, I do deliver stuff here pretty often. These guys have been drinking and partying for a long, long time. I don't know if this a wedding is ever going to happen. But it's good for business. And he starts, like, knocking the door. Hey, open up in there! Who who resides in here? Yeah, it's a Melvish dame, Princess Snowfall at dusk. Mm. Mm. Then I believe we are in the right place. Uh, yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Hey, are you guys asleep in there or what? Door opens up, and uh, on the other side is just this humongous, obese, ten foot tall, hairless troll. Wearing ragged and filthy clothes. He's got a, a pouch that's sort of moss-covered, hanging on a string of rope around his waist, kind of like a fanny pack. Um, and on his back, he's almost being used, I guess, like a like a mount or a pack animal, because there's a there's a a harness that's strapped to his back and there's a goblin that just seems to like knock on his head and say okay open up the door and you can see on top there's a blue skinned uh yeah big yellow beady eyes uh dressed in purple finery a wart skinned goblin and he just says oh more gifts bring them on in bring them on in oh, you got some new employees here huh these are your slaves? He said, ah, I don't know. They just, they showed up out of nowhere. <laughs> Damn it. I'm immediately blown. <laughs> he said, all right. Go along with it. Load all the stuff in. Come on in. And so. I'm happy to be a slave. And I'll just like take the stuff and just bring it in. And uh, you started to kind of load stuff in. There's like garlands hanging everywhere in here. And roses that are uh, kind of blue bluish color ribbons there's other gifts that have been like kind of laid out stacked in the corners and there's a sort of like a, a very warm feeling in here there's a fireplace off to the side here that you can see from it there are like boots and ice skates that are hanging around the hearth and uh just behind you when you, you enter into the room you can see a bunch of like uh hooks that are are, are moored into the wall with little stocking caps and gloves and mittens and things like that. You guys are having a party. The big troll looks at you and says, "Me eat." And the troll uh, the goblin says, "No, no, no. They they they're fine. They're 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 helping out today. Running deliveries, I guess." And so you conclude like loading up all the stuff. What's the cause for celebration? The goblin that's atop the troll says, "Oh, it's Princess Snowfall at dusk is we're we're anxiously preparing for her wedding day. Just waiting on the groom. So who is the the groom? Well, beats me some knight. Name of Sir Chide. Never met him. <laughs> he gives that. <laughs> That's laughing. <laughs> well, it's a stupid name, isn't it? Ah, I know. He well, just pats he pats his brother <laughs> on the back. <laughs> well, we'd love to pay our respects to the to the bride while we're here. Is that something we could do? Well, uh, what's your name? Silver upon his brow, and I'm like really come across drunk as hell. Like, I'm gonna talk to the wife. The You've been bride. to a couple of other <laughs> weddings before this one, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so the goblin like knocks on the skull of the troll. Hey, get the list out. And the thing is, okay, then eat. And he's like, no, no, you're not eating them. The troll opens up that the drawstring of that pouch and like pulls out like a piece of parchment, hands it up to the rider. And he like 
unfolds the, the scroll and he says, Okay, silver upon brow. I don't see your name on the guest list. I tell you what, there might be another way I'll let you in. Mm -hmm. And he like points at silver. I think you guys are going to be interested. I think you're going to want this. Hey, nub skull. Dum, dum, dum. Knocks on the skull of the troll. Uh, give me the stuff. Give me the stuff. He like reaches into his bag and he pulls out like a smaller bag and hands it up to him. And he pulls open the drawstring of that, the goblin does. And he pulls out a mushroom and he tosses mm. it at silver. He's like, hey, try that. Catch it out of the air. I'll show uh, it to the fryer. Uh, I will try to identify it. <laughs> Can I, is that possible? It is not possible. Oh. He tosses I, one I'm... to each of you. Oh. But well, wait, well, it's always good to find out the source. Uh, wh where, where did you find these uh, shrooms of such? Out in the forest. Bridgia mm. has the best shrooms. You and, all um, eat one of those, I'll let you in. Have you had one of these? I've had friend? two this morning. <laughs> I'm going to look, and I feel like the friar knows, like, the kind of the, mm. the signs of the body language of someone that has had some type of shroom or not. He's kind of like itching or rubbing at his skin. Mm. And when That's he like not... puts a lot of pressure on like an arm or whatever, you can see it kind of turns purple. Almost like one of the skin colors is really his natural color or something. So there's some kind of magical effect happening with him. Oh. Uh... How about, what if one of us eats it? Would that be enough to vouch? No, it's got to be all of you. Uh, Joffrey's going to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I was about to, but I'll, I'll let see what happens first. Everyone's waiting to see what happens with Joffrey. Go ahead and roll a d12. D12. Brother, the Dolman one has changed you. It's the love of a woman. I rolled a two. You, you become Do six inches tall. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna. I'll pick him up. His his clothes and everything. No, he just becomes six inches tall within all of his gear and clothing. So, oh my God. little naked Sir Joffrey. <laughs> He's like inside his helmet. Yeah. Um. Well, I've seen worse. So I'll eat mine. All right. Uh, go ahead and roll a d12. I rolled a three. All right, uh, your skin turns purple permanently. Yay! Like permanently. <laughs> you got the drunk purple elf over there. Oh no! <laughs> Missing teeth, hobbling. Oh, well, are you sure that I think maybe the lady would want uh, would not want to keep this us waiting? Eat your mushroom. Eat your mushroom. <laughs> Uh oh. I'm just glad he didn't say you turned six inches tall permanently. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's like, okay, yeah, uh, I'll eat the mushroom. I can't. Wow. Okay. Uh, is it, what did you say? D12? D D12. Oh boy. I don't. Uh, nine. You get a very warm and fuzzy feeling. It's just like you remember. Oh. You will automatically make your next saving throw. Oh. Hmm. Oh. Oh, well, I don't know about you all, but it's pretty good. Probably make a note of that because your next saving throw will probably not be today. <laughs> okay. All right. I guess it's just me then, huh? Yeah, man. Go What's ahead. the worst that could happen? I could die. But what's well, the best bad. that could that happen? That would be the worst. I'm almost debating whether I can try a, like a pickpocket check to to pretend to eat it. Ooh. You want to try to do that? Do a, do a little sleight of hand or whatever. Yeah, that's clever. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and I'll. All right, come on. What's your percentage with that now? Sixty. Uh, it is. No, it's uh, 25. Oh, it's much lower than I thought. Uh, at four. Oh. So he seems oh, satisfied, fired. and he says, okay, you guys are cool. Yeah, head on up if you want. Yeah, uh, I'm cool. Uh, I will 
I'll be holding my brother. I'll find, I don't know, maybe a wa hanky or something. I think I have another glove that isn't dissolved. Maybe I'll put him in one of the gloves and have him. I'm enjoying the fresh air. I'll, I'll also <laughs> grab. Uh, <laughs> oh. Um, I'll even gra I'll grab the ring and still put it like in the hand holding him. Since he was the one holding it, I'll have him still kind of be in possession of the ring. Sounds good. So uh, the goblin doorman here uh, would indicate you have said that you're here for the party. So he points you to uh, this door that leads to a staircase that would lead up. There is another door in the room. Based on some of the noises that you hear coming from the other side of that, you probably guess that it is a kitchen. Sounds like a lot of chopping and things bubbling. All right. So what would you like to do? It's a good maybe, opportunity yeah. to explore mouse holes and yes i think maybe we, could we could we ask could we ask directions to the to the lady uh he yeah he would point you to the staircase leading up okay well shall we brother are you are you ready i mean i'm a little embarrassed to meet her you are my but you know oh don't worry nothing much has changed and so you make your way up <laughs> And you find yourselves on a floor where the there is a huge feasting table that is laid out, amply bedecked with all sorts of provisions. Roasted swan, mountains of fruit dripping with syrup, ice wines chilling in buckets, uh, spirits and crystal decanters, and all about a raucous, uh, maybe not raucous, this is a dignified occasion. But there's all manner of frost elves that are sitting around this table. Some of them proud plate mail wearing uh, knights. Some of them decadent nobles who are dapping handkerchiefs on their mouth and hoisting up, you know, flutes of some of that alcohol, having quiet conversation. Um... And these are all elves? These are all frost elves. So they all have kind of an azure blue skin. Um, kind of icy cold demeanor. Um, although they, they all seem very comfortable amongst one another in this conversation and such. And there is, uh, kind of opposite the staircase that you're coming up, another door, presumably uh, housing a stairwell that leads up further. Um, standing respectfully at the door are four frost elf guards wearing plate mail, holding um, their hands on their sheathed pommels of their swords. Uh, there is another guest here that is unlike the others, a wow. corpulent bald man dressed in a robe of wondrous colors. He has a ring on every finger of his six-fingered hands. Lavish necklaces, gold chains around his neck. He's currently imbibing a hookah on the table in front of him. A little bit with... Uh, he, he seems like he's probably uh, consorting a bit with the nobles, telling some jokes, and they're laughing, and he's having a good time. And as you all enter up, he says... Oh, finally, they have arrived. Although I don't see... There's a, one of you missing. Mm. Oh, there he is. A little bit small this morning. Well, welcome, <laughs> he ate one something and all. Bad. Well, <laughs> then you should eat something good. Please join me around the table. Make make up a plate for yourselves. Have some wine. This is a joyous occasion. Have you brought Sir Chide? No. I, uh... The ring? Yes. Excellent. I'm gonna start eating. <laughs> mm. <clears throat> I'm sorry, sir. I think it would be good to introduce each other. Uh, to each other. I'm Silver upon his brow. Silver and Friar Fitzpatrick, Sir Joffrey, Thomas, and Lilibeth. Hmm? Welcome. We are at disadvantage. Uh, who are you? 
I am the Duke who cherishes dreams. Oh, go on. It's, I mean, just as, like as a side, yeah. some of the paintings in that thing, yeah. some of the people that were, that he was, that Sir Chide was fighting against had six fingers, right? And there's it, something with, we saw drawings of somebody with six fingered hands or something like that. Could be. I think the Duke that cherishes dreams, that is really familiar to me. That was like, I feel like it was the crystals or something. Something, had something to do with the crystals, right? That the Duke that cherishes dreams could take you away or something. Uh, I think mm -hmm. the rumor, I don't remember who told you this or where you got the information, but I think it was something that the crystals in the crystal cave mm -hmm. sometimes preserve right. or... Uh, that I don't know. It was like kind of a rumor, I think, about the origins of the crystals in the cave, and why they produce. Because like smoking the crystals will en enter you into this realm of dreams, and somebody mm -hmm. had speculated that it is like the Duke who cherishes dreams, his magic at work. Um, but whether you thought it was a fairy tale at the time, now there is a character in front of you who is named the Duke who cherishes dreams. And he's being very inviting and welcoming you and having you eat and it seems to know who you all are. Well, I should apologize that I have been told that my manners uh, and mannerisms are not not my usual. So I come across to you as um, inebriated. I promise I'm not yet. Oh, well, an inebriation is but a doorway into my realm. So <laughs> I welcome such things. How is it that you know who we are? Oh, you all dream beautiful dreams about one another and your desires and where you wish to be. I know all about you. Don't tell them about the dreams. Those are just dreams. Your dreams um, have led you here. Brother? What? Well? Oh, I what, see. What is going on? I... Do you make us dream, or do you just see our dreams? Hmm. I do not make you dream. You choose to dream. You choose to see what you wish to see, and I am but the ferryman, helping you to navigate to those through those sometimes choppy waters. Were you the one who allowed the lady to speak with my companion in his yes and he grins <laughs> <laughs> I like I hesitate to ask this question was it the lady herself speaking or was it always you well, she is just but upstairs you could speak with her, her yourself and get her perspective on things anything you could do about our friend Joffrey's State. I think it might make the conversation a little smoother if he weren't six inches tall and naked. Hmm. He like <laughs> coughs a bit, spits into his hand, and then blows out this kind of dust that like filters over you, and you start to like return back to full size. It seems almost all of you turn to regular size. <laughs> He's quite drafty in here. Uh I I will I'll give him his clothes. As he, yeah, you, you get your clothes, get all kind of situated back to normal. And he says, I will admit to a fair bit of manipulation to have brought you here. What you have brought, the ring and Sir Chide, is very important. I should like to reward you in some way. Perhaps name what it is you seek, what you would desire. Or you could leave it to me to derive what that might be. After all, I do know so much about you. Well, I'll start with a small task. Uh, my current state uh, runs counter to my personality. I'd, I'd rather not come across like a drunken buffoon to everyone around me. Is there anything you could do to help me understand the nature of this curse that I'm inflicted with? Hmm. You wish to return to normal. I'm afraid that... Um... Perhaps that is outside of my ability to fix for you just now, but when you return back to the Dolmenwood, 
You could seek out my ally, the Sorceress Ygrain. You'll find her in the village of Meager's Reach, in the northeastern reaches of the Dolman Wood. She is well versed in these types of things, this type of magic. We may be able to fix you up a bit. Thank you very much. And he says, you know, need, no need for you all to decide just now. Have a think mm -hmm. on it. Communicate with me via your dreams what you would like, and I will have my ally, Ygrain, deliver it to you. It's a very kind and of you. Could I ask a favor? Something, maybe, not a reward, but just a favor. You seem to know and hear all the dreams. Can you tell us, at least, have you heard of Sir Silas? Is he still dreaming? He still dreams. He has made his way home. The secret that he carries is not yet out, but will soon become public. There's a lot of dreams coming from the south, a lot of dreams of an ambitious nature. Perhaps you find yourselves in a good spot being in the Dolman Wood, away from all of that. Are there other questions I could help you with? Otherwise, I don't think we should keep our lady waiting any longer. She has waited many hundreds of years for her betrothed. It is our understanding that the two of them have been kept apart by her sire. Is, do you work at his behest or are you, you know, are you an ally of his or? Oh no, 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 none of us here. We are all allies and friends of the princess. And as such, her happiness is paramount. We are the sympathetic court of Princess Snowfall at dusk. I have just one question left then. Uh, we were under the impression that once we complete our quest, that we very may well be stranded in Phrygia. But we have matters to attend to in Dolman Wood. Is there a way to return us? A window possibly to escape? Of course. I'll leave the door open for you just long enough for you to return. So it is you who maintains this passageway? Hmm. No, but I can keep it open but long enough for you to return home. But then it must be closed and you must never return here. It is far too dangerous. The cold prince is always looking for ways to return and reassert his claim over the Dolman Wood. I like the mortal folk too much. I delight in their dreams too much to have all of that go away. Then I say, let us bring the ring. Brother, are you ready? I, I see the way the wind is blowing here, and I am ready. I'm I'm still at this point shovel in hand <laughs> and handfuls of food in my mouth and That's drinking right. goblets of wine. Mm -hmm. Uh did anybody else eat or drink any anything? Yeah, I definitely drank. Um uh, Joffrey probably uh, took a swim in, in a wine goblet and uh, <laughs> uh -huh. and then uh when he in the full size maybe grabbed a turkey leg. I think after maybe hearing that we would be safe to return, he would see the wine and go, mm-hmm, and just he'll cheers whoever's closest and then, like, ask for a glass of wine. All right. I need each of you to make a save versus spells. Ooh. All right. Isaac, you automatically make yours, right? This magic is a fairy origin, That's true. Right? That's true. Uh, Frank uh -huh. Fitzpatrick makes it, I guess. Wow, that's cool. This is a spell? I would say it is of fairy origin, yes. I get a plus two bonus to my save. I fail. For silver, it probably doesn't matter because this might already be true. I don't know. But uh, basically, you have an intense longing to return to fairy. I uh, feel suddenly very homesick. Did anybody else fail that? I failed it by one. Okay, Ooh. so you're almost like not wanting to return back uh, home because it is so pleasant and comfortable here. Listen, Thomas, uh, I'm struggling and have struggled 
I will take you to Fairy once we've completed our business. I promise. I have to come back. <laughs> I have to. So uh, the Duke seems to gesture to the knights that were guarding the door, and they uh, step aside and open the door for you, giving you access to the stairwell. And you head upstairs to the top level of the tower, where you could see, sitting upon a canopy bed decked with white wolf skins, is a beautiful, ageless, otherworldly being with blonde hair, the color of the winter sun, and pale skin. Her blue eyes light up as she sees you all enter, and you realize that even without uh, producing the ring, the apparition of Sir Chide enters into the room and manifests, and his translucent skin, the sorrowful disposition of the night, melts away, and he becomes almost like flesh and blood in the room, dressed in his plate mail, and the two reach out to one another and embrace. Tears of joy uh, ringing down the princess's cheeks, the sorrow of Sir Chai melting away, and there's just this beautiful moment that gives you pause. But then together the two turn to you all, and the princess says, Thank you. Thank you one and all for delivering my eternal love to me. I have waited so long to feel your embrace. And he says likewise. And the two of them are lavishing praise upon you all. And the princess says, To the extent possible, I wish to reward you. I suppose there is something I could give you as a physical reward. And she runs over, and there is a... Um, uh, dressing table nearby where there's a uh, jewelry box that she opens up and inside there are a number of jewels but she, she grabs a handful of these very unique jewels that have a deep blue color and they sort of glow a bit and she hands each of you three. I, I know it isn't much but uh, perhaps you can take this as a, as a token of my gratitude and I, I just don't know. I don't know if there's anything, any way for me to truly repay what you have done. Might you have a private word with our friend, Sir Joffrey? Uh, which of you is Sir Joffrey? <laughs> <laughs> Madam Shanty Woods, it is. <laughs> uh... And it comes together that she has no idea who you are, and this was all just a thing that was conjured up by the Duke. I just want to see you happy. So. I would uh, kind of nudge Joffrey and give him the ring and say, well, maybe you give it to them. Yeah, and then he would, he would do that. He would kind of, you know, probably walk, walk over to her and and seeing no no recollection on on her face or anything would probably you know um, uh, jump into kind of duty and kind of bow and and present the ring you know in a very kind of dutiful way uh, to the princess. She will approach and she will she will accept the ring from you, and she will look down and she will say, Sir Joffrey. Are you the one responsible for retrieving my ring, for delivering Sir Chide to me once again? I mean, it was kind of a group effort, you know. I can't take full credit. It was him. The modesty of a knight is not unfamiliar to me. And she smiles. She gives you a kiss on the forehead. And she says, <laughs> A wish, a wish, I will give you Name it, Sir Joffrey. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Wow. Uh, Joffrey would wish for true love, I guess. And she says, so it shall be. Return home and true love will find you. To Madame Shanty Woods, no. <laughs> 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 uh, oh, I can't write, wait to write this story. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's probably, Joffrey's probably got love on his mind. That's probably the wish he would make. Yeah. Sir Chide tells you 
he is going to be forever eternally grateful for what you have done. And that, um, of course, you are to leave and return to the Dolman Wood. But if it should ever be possible for you to find a way to contact them uh, in the future, that you will always have their aid. Uh, he suspects that the two worlds are going to drift apart in the coming um, days as you leave and the the connection is closed. But he, again, thanks you for maintaining the wards and doing the service that will prevent the Cold Prince from being able to use this uh, pathway back to the Dolman Wood. And he would ask you to be vigilant, keep an ear out. There may be other such opportunities for him to... He's always vigilant about trying to find such such pathways to allow himself to re-enter the Dolman Wood, and so he thanks you for keeping that tradition of the Triple Compact alive. And with that, is there is there anything else you wish to do here in Phrygia? That's a small ask, but do you happen to have paper and quill mm -hmm. and some ink? Uh, sure. Uh, she go back to uh her table, her dressing table there, and pull that out for you. I'm going to get to pinning, but well, I guess as soon as we get back, probably. It sounds the good. Winter's daughter. I think that's what we'll call this. It is I am curious if, in, if she would have a uh, flute of some kind made by Elven Hands. Um, she says that she doesn't have anything like that, but... Uh, Having been reunited with her lover, perhaps it is time to open the gifts. And uh, she will head down with Sir Chide uh, to the festing hall, and the goblins will bring up some of the gifts, and they'll start to unwrap it. And uh, if you stay for this bit of celebration, uh, there will be a musical instrument like that uh, that she will um, kind of give you as a, a reward in addition to the gemstones. Wonderful, wonderful. This was nice, wasn't it, brother? This was good. I'm happy that you did what you did. It was good. I'm happy that she... I'm sad. I'm sad. But I'm happy that she is happy, and I'm happy that... that we did the right thing. And that for today, the Dolmenwood is protected from the Cold Prince. So, as you return back home, uh, Lilibeth is not there. As you pass through the candles, you return back to the tomb. Oh, no. You know what? It's, it's probably like two months later. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. <laughs> I was going to tell oh, you, no. I forgot about that aspect of the fairy. Uh, Apu is a grown man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's got children. Yeah. <laughs> we'll say there's a message there that says, you know, maybe like etched into or inked into the wall, maybe etched into the wall on the stairwell, um, indicating that she has gone to Lankshorn to wait for you. What would you do next? Would you go back to Lankshorn immediately or would you go and stop in with the Droon? I think, um, so it's, that's an interesting question because I think... I mean, geographically, it makes sense. Well, actually, where is Langshorn in, in relation to where we are and where the Dolman Stone, the Druun is? Uh, so Langshorn would be like to the north, northwest of you. Mm -hmm. But the Druun is like half a right day there. from where you are. Yeah. Langshorn's like what, like a day? Probably a days? day, day or two. Yeah. And the group has decided that they wanted to navigate their way back to the Golok Stone, which is the ring of stones that is protected by the Audrun Aethelgrim, who had set them out on a quest to deal with the barrow bogey that was harrowing his daughter. They have done that, and the reward for doing so was to allow them to use the Dolman Stones, and he would instruct them to use them. It's going to be like early evening by the time that you get back there, maybe about 4 p.m. or so. And you arrive back at the nodal, and you can see these stones, sandstone monoliths that jut up out of the earth are in the care of that towering man with the shaven head and the intense stare. Um, he is wearing his traditional night black cloak and hood, and he is, uh, seems to be tending to the fungal garden that surrounds the central 10-foot square slab 
that is split down the middle in the center of those stones. And upon you arriving in the glade where the stones are located, he nods at you all and invites you with a gesture to come forward. I look around for, uh, are the mushrooms in check here, right? We're not going to be, not going to be blasted with anything, right? He says, you have nothing to worry about. They are not active. I have heard from my wife what you have done and that you have dealt with the barrel bogey. I have heard no reports that he further harrows my daughter. So for that, I have you to thank. I'd say the solution was pretty permanent. Good. And I have heard that you successfully found Sir Chide. We did. And delivered him to the other side. We did. I'm sorry I didn't tell you more about that place, but in hearing what you told me of the friar's brother here, I suspected I decided to take a chance, take a risk, that perhaps what you were setting out to do might close that crossing permanently. We shall see if it takes hold. One question that I have for you is, I know uh, from meeting and speaking with your daughter, her seeking to join these groups of witches, which hopefully was thwarted by much of this, what relationship is there between the Droon and those that are referred to as witches? She said that? Uh, and yes, she did. As a father, I am not eager to hear this news as a... Drune, we have at times consorted with the witches and collaborated in what we know, what they know. They have a vast pool of knowledge on the power of the Gwigirons, ancient packs from the gods that once lived here in the Dolmenwood. Very protective of their secrets. We don't actively uh, fight each other. And it is true that they sometimes enlist our young women into their ranks, but I would I would see that my daughter is raised in the tradition of the Droon and learns Droon magic. So their magic is different than yours. Yes. Is Theirs it? is more of more like the Friar's magic. It is of a bestowed upon magic from powers through tradition, through worship. So they are to be feared in their mastery of magic, but not necessarily to be feared in the fact that just because they're witches, they're just evil. No, I, as a drone, I stay away from words such as good and evil. I am starting to learn to uh, look in the gray areas myself. And you say that the witches will try and recruit the females of your race, I take it, witches tend to be female. Exclusively. And the Droon tend to be exclusively male, the wizards that guard the stones? Traditionally. Have you heard of the name Black Alice? Could be a name ascribed to the hag who lives in the swamps to the north. I've heard she goes by other names, too. Yes, she's been given many, many names throughout the ages. You worry about witches, she is not a witch, she is something else entirely. I don't know that I can define what that is, but I don't think that she is native to the Dolmenwood. My theory is that she is an outcast uh, from wherever she is from. She, there are many rumors about her being interested in devouring the flesh of those who wander into her realm. Maybe carving you up and using you for reagents, for her concoctions, for her dark magics. On to your reward, then. And he kind of gestures to this, the cleft stone in the center. Yes. And what he will tell you is that you can use that stone to gaze upon areas of the Dolmenwood. And it can be used to, in game terms, look upon a hex and identify not only the outwardly appearing things about a hex, but also maybe what secrets are contained within that six miles. Um, so, a variety of ways we could play this out, um, but I would say, of course, you have hexes that you know about that you could tell me, yes, I want to know, Alex, about this hex that we've been to. 
or uh, maybe you would could describe to me a place that you've heard about, and I will point it out on the map and give you the info on it. Are we able to do it like once? Is it just like a one-time deal, or are we able to come back and use it ever he, so often? He has impressed upon you that he's going to let you use it once, and he never wants to see you again. Something tells me you will return at some point pleading with him that, can we use it I'm one sure. more time? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I was just going to say maybe the friar would say maybe we wait until there's something in need of knowing rather than just picking something now. That's still mm. fun. Let's pick a random one. No, well, you're there, probably right. There are places that we have been that there are probably secrets that we can know. There's, there's the cave that we met the other drone in mm -hmm. that probably has a number of secrets in. There's Nif Nimbly's tower. Now, here's something else. One of the things, rumor that I had heard about was story of great treasure in an abandoned fortress. And I believe that had something to do, there was some fortress by a lake. So Aeth the Grim would say that that sounds like the ruined fairy castle of Horblight Keep, which is the Cold Prince's home on this side. Which apparently is empty. And contains empty. great treasures. Well, not empty. Probably filled with all sorts of things, but not him. Were I, were I to make a suggestion, it would be for the hex that that lies in. It's also your, it's sort of like your reward here. So I feel like you can, mm. I, I feel like your call is, let's go with that. You know, this was your quest to use the, the Dolman Stone. I feel like you should have... Um, the the final say yeah i, I would yeah, agree totally and, and that sounds like something that would be useful it's still topical so i guess that would kind of wrap it up nicely you see high upon an outcropping of stone a fearsome castle overlooking the waters of a lake it is a top sheer chalk cliffs 100 feet 150 feet high riddled with lichen and patches of sickly violet fungus there is a stair that is carved into the cliffside that winds its way up from the banks of the lake up to the outer walls of the keep. There is an aisle that you see that is in the lake where there is a ruined wide square tower that pierces through the canopy of a wood. And there's sort of an eerie green glow that hangs above the tower. You see the raging of a, a waterfall that feeds into the lake. In the sky, you can see giant bats with a three-foot wingspan with ugly, snarling visages flying about. Yeah, it's kind of got like that haunted, like Transylvania kind of feel. And with that, given the time, I think that is what you will discover. And But I think from here, your plan is to head back to uh, Langshore. So yeah. yes, we will pick up the next session with you basically entering into Langshore. And we'll just kind of skip forward a day. We'll pick up on the 27th of Chysting. We are 20 Sides to Every Story. We are a gaming channel dedicated to bringing you live play D&D, Old School Essentials, Dungeon Crawl Classics, really any TTRPGs that we have somebody with a love for that is willing to come on camera and run we would invite you to join our discord server so you can stay up to date with our schedule for not just this game but really all of the games that we have going on on the channel and be a part of our community because we do recruit people to play in these games directly from really our discord is kind of where the community lives so join that and come and join us for a game sometime or just chat about the games that we are playing if you'd like to support the podcast uh, feel free to check out the description of this wherever you're listening to it there should be a support Support the channel button if we have support it does cost a little bit money to host and create the podcast version of things so if you like this format be sure to support that that'll allow us to maybe convert more stuff to the podcast format with that goodbye for now have a great weekend and we will see you in two weeks for more dolmenwood